they stand in. And I believe the people in the audience were the same. And I get it. But when you have a panel of like, who was on that panel? Was it... Um, Oh my gosh, it happened more than once, though, so I'm not for sure which one it you're happened talking about. Every time, yeah. like there was a powerful panel with the mayor of Compton, who was like a twenty-something millennial. Then it, there was who else was on that panel? Was it? Um, oh my god, the the state senator from California. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I fell in love with her Me because too. she was so I like her. passionate. She's like another auntie. It was She's so almost like Maxine, but right. There were yeah. so many powerful women up there who we wanted to hear more from them, but the people asking questions were making it about themselves. Yes, and I just felt like no, if you're going to the mic, keep it simple. Keep please it short. Get to the doggone point. Ask a question. Yeah. Don't and that's to great. The whole history in the and, background. And I feel like you even could say, like, I really want to talk to you about this, about my issues later. But my question right now is this: Then yeah. that would give you a little in. Remember, we talk about networking and like the whole remember me situation. Yeah, I can't remember if you're saying so many random things. Like, just stick to me. Follow up with the guy you did social media with. Yeah. So, yes, that was one of the annoying So, parts. that was only uh, it. Because there was so many people of power in the room. People running for office. Like, it was so good to be amongst women who were, like, trying or knew of a mission or supportive of a mission. Like, everyone in the place was just really powerful to me. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, they really were. Definitely. And the thing is... What stood out to me was that the majority of the people who had a cause or the ones who were the most passionate have all been through something. And they used their story of pain. They turned their pain into a cause, into a passion project that helped, has helped so many others. They had the um, one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter. They had um black girls rock founder yes and they had the the lady who uh, a mom who started this anti-gun movement in um schools Mm -hmm. and um all of them have experienced hurt and it just they had the high school students from the florida school that was shot up they came and spoke remember the opening day the Mm -hmm. other little girls like See, and I'm looking crazy because I just didn't even realize that's where they came from. I yeah, from, yeah. It was a variety of kids, so I think I missed the, that they said that. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some babies from Chicago, some teenagers who are definitely um, definitely stating their calls and working in their calls now, mm-hmm. their causes now. So cool. It was. No, it was, we it, did it, get I a had chance to. chills and tears. The majority you of kept looking at me talking time. about the chills on your. I arm. know, and I'm like, I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry, and like it's just crazy because um, there are so many things that we can as women do to help heal this world. Yes, and I think that's why what the most inspirational thing, young and old, we as women are very powerful, very influential, and we just see things. So differently. So that's a superpower and that's special. And a lot of times throughout history, we have definitely been um, dissuaded Mm -hmm. in in, uh, pursuing all of those things that we are great in. Yeah. And my, one of my, I teach an AP environmental science class and one of my students came to me and said, this is the first woman's history study empowerment class I've ever taken. And I was like, girl, what you talking about? We were learning environmental. She said, I've learned more in your class about women and empowerment and voice and all those than anything else. And I said, but I teach science. And she's like, no, you don't understand. She's like, your course should be environmental science slash women's studies. And I was like, wait, wait, because she said, because the premises of environmental science is educate the woman, heal the world. Like, that is how I teach the class. And she was like, 
I never heard that in any other class. Except I've never for, heard that. All this schooling I've had. It's a big deal. If the women are educated and the women are, because if a woman is educated, a woman will move and they will act and they will do more than what they've done. And in the world, we have suppressed so many voices because yeah. that and they gender. know that that is what's going to happen. Yeah. Women are so smart and they are so intelligent. They can figure out things. We can figure out how to get bills pay, paid. You can figure out so many things on so many levels that if we all were at the same level of education, it would be too much. Yeah. So the suppressive voice that keeps women in their places and a lot of my Hispanic girls yeah. really identified with women's suffrage in um, like Southern South America because I would tell them this is a culture that has designed you to not be able to say what you need to say. And that was just environmental science. Like, it's totally not related to what it is, but my goal was to make them be able to use what they their, their voice. So anyways, we were able to actually snag um, a small conversation with um, Madame Gandhi, mm-hmm. who is dope. <laughs> she is. It's so like, cool. That vibe was just... So real, and she's the she does the uh, what is her called something period. It's called happy happy period. Happy period. Mm-hmm. So I love the play on words, being the English girl that I am. Yes. So happy period, like happy in the story. Period. We right. gotta be happy women, or it can be read as happy period our menstrual cycle period. right and, and i she, love that pun it's i don't cute. know if y'all remember the woman who ran the marathon and bled the entire time. like she basically it didn't have any sanitary napkins or tampons no tampon no sanitary napkins. yeah she was just like that. it went viral like in 2015 i think it was and basically it was like she was finishing the finish line and had like you know her menstrual cycle bleeding down her leg, but it was like, she said it was the most, this woman was at the, the summit and was like, it was the most, what did she say? Most freeing, freeing. Uh-huh. like she liberating freeing. thing that she'd ever experienced because women are so suppressed by the tampon. Like we definitely adjust I, and, and cater to what our time of the month. We really do. Right. And I'm not going to lie. I was nervous that day. I was wearing pants, uh, white yeah, pants. Yeah, white pants on that day. And I was like, oh, I don't know when my cycle's going to come on. But uh, while she was up there talking, girl, I was like, if my I hope <laughs> cycle starts today, Bleed on, sis. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to walk around with this bloody accessory all day Because it's long. real. It's real. And the internet literally blocks it all out. They put... Blur signs, if you were to post something with like sheets that are bloody or underwear that are bloody, they put like a blur really? on it. Yes, yes. And like literally, this is our lives. This is what we Every do. Every single month. Even like, I, you know, I'm coaching volleyball and one of my girls said to me today, I just feel, because I, I asked her like, what's up with your body? Why are you moving that way? And she was like, I just started my period today. I just don't feel comfortable with my body. And I was like, I get that. Like, I yeah. I totally understand all that. But I was like, you know, exercise helps. And definitely just, you know, keep going and everything's going to be great. So big shout out to Madam Gandhi. She was so gracious and so sweet. Like, we posted a selfie of all of us, me, you, and her. She was super sweet. Powerful, motivating. Got that Ellen vibe. Yes, girl. She's like she works for Spotify, so she was doing her thing with the music world and definitely like serving it up with her suit and blonde hair or yellow hair. Yeah. I was like sis. And then her suit was like neon plaid or something like that. So cute. It really so was cute. cute and funky and it definitely suited her style. It did. And her um, personality. So who else in the summit stood out to you? Did you have Girl? Jane Dog on Fonda. Can we talk about her for a moment? I threw my hands up above my head because I just realized that we had not talked about Jane. I've been Fonda. waiting. I've been holding this one. Girl. So we went with a group of friends. It was six. Six of us in all. 
Most of them represented the White Dress Project. Hey, Tanika. Hey, girl, hey. DC and Atlanta rep, represented. Rep, rep, rep. That was awesome. That was so much It was nice greatness. meeting them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we've been knowing Tanika, but meeting her um, DC counterparts. and counterparts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, Jane Fonda had me. I'm so, I was just so lost because I don't, we're not really from the generation of watching. I mm-hmm. didn't watch Jane Fonda. Did you growing up? No, but so, I just knew her from her, um, her marriage to Ted Turner. Her, yeah, her Atlanta affiliations. Yeah. Like yeah. I knew that she was That's like woke about. I didn't a lot know of stuff. her political standings. I didn't. I don't know what her political. I mean, I don't know any of that. But I was refreshed by her honesty and being a white female and her self reflection. Mm. Female. <laughs> Do you know how deep Jane was in you go with these shenanigans? I'm sorry, you just really acted I, like every Tracy, time I hear female, you just really acted like Tracy Ellis. Stop, was just in. And pause. I was over here. Pause. Being very first lady. Pause. Because like we're gonna get back to Jane Fonda, but me and Keisha got into a bit of a tiff about, um, you know, because. Michelle Obama and Tracy Ellis Ross were a great pair on the stage. Yes, you can tell they are super close. And then we got into a conundrum because we couldn't figure out. Well, I could figure out clearly who I was. I clearly said that I am a perfect. No, nope, nope, you're not allowed. Mix. You're not allowed. Of Michelle nope. and Tracy. No, nope. and I, I think said. I'm 50 50. I said if you were able, you cannot mix, you have to pick one. And why do you come up with the rules? <laughs> who deems clearly, you? clearly there would be a you know who is whom situation between Michelle Obama <clears throat> and Tracy Ellis Ross, which I love both. I, I feel like you. both of us love both, but we had to pick one because mixing is not an option. And in that moment, I transcended to. <laughs> Elevated myself to the position of Michelle Obama. I just don't see it. I don't see either of them in so. here. <laughs> I think we evaluated the checklist earlier. And clearly, I, I you, more... you evaluated your checklist. Okay, go ahead. I never evaluated. Go ahead. Do yours. Regal, classy, wearer of pearls. I, what do I have in my ears? That's because right you now. knew we were doing the podcast. No, ma'am. And you tried to put a no, ma'am. Because you knew Michelle had them in. No, and you just ma'am. Wanted to do I am clearly here with pearls in my ears. Who? Who? After my day of being first lady Keisha Mitchell at Temple Elementary School. <laughs> Well, you know, my students Ooh. know me, Ooh, Jesus and God. while I don't wear pearls daily, they understand when I have them on, it's for an important event, meaning pearls mean serious matter. As yes, well. yes. We had our fifth grade graduation today. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, no shade to Tracy Ellis Ross, I will, I will definitely, I'm welcoming someone saying that I am Tracy Ellis Ross, which my students tell me all the time. Exactly. So I agree. They also tell me I am Rosa Parks. You know, <laughs> who is Regal? Um, Coretta Scott of the Kings. Me as well. All these women combined together make Michelle Obama. So <laughs> sit back and enjoy the ride as you watch me transcend into the greatest black woman oh my gosh <laughs> i probably should have gone into law school this because that was so comical. a straight up appendix a appendix b appendix c appendix d the Not reasons really. why i would be michelle obama I'm straight still waiting. booty and waist whatever comical timing and clever black girlness Definitely me with Tracy. Natural hair, curls, and whatnot, me. Um, light skin, me. They're coming so, <laughs> They're coming out so rapidly. You notice how 
all of these Tracy traits Both. are coming out. Both. So, Both. No, no, no. You are reaching with First Lady. I probably already nailed that one, nope. so I'm moving on to... You are reaching, but we'll let you have it. Also, I will give you the small way. 